welcome back to the bench. Like a lot of people who uh, got into computers in the 80s and 90s, I have a collection of floppy disks. Now, the thing is that, yeah, these things will not last forever and they need to be archived. And the best way to do that would be to stick them in a floppy drive and then make a copy, a digital copy. And yeah, so there are various projects out there that, uh, you know, can help you do that. Um, Cairo Flux, the Grease Weasel, there are probably a few others out there. Uh, but the problem is not so much archiving the discs, but the quantity of the discs, because when I say I have a few floppy disks, I mean I have a few floppy disks. And this isn't even all of them. I have probably around about 800 three and a half inch floppy disks and about 200 five and a quarter inch floppy disks. And the idea would be to archive them all. And yeah, it's a daunting task and one that I have been putting off for many, many years. Because yeah, even with a Grease Weasel or a Cairo Flux, um, it's going to take months of just sitting there, inserting a floppy disk into a drive, clicking on copy and then taking it out and putting the next one in. Which, yeah, this is, yeah, it's about as fun as a bucket of hospital sick. So, recently, I came into possession of something rather interesting. And it's pretty big and pretty heavy. This is a copy jet by a company whose initials is LSK. Um, I did look it up. Uh, this is a German company and they're still in existence. Um, this is a disc, a floppy disk duplicator machine. Now this is a dumb machine because literally all it is is a power supply, a mechanism and a floppy drive, which we'll take a look at in a minute. Um, they do do another version of this, which is a self-contained unit. So it reads in the floppy disk and then it just duplicates them. But yeah, this you need to control and connect to a PC. There it is on the back, a serial port and a floppy connector. Now this is a 37 way connector because they're just passing through this and it would have gone to another connector on the back of the computer, which then would have connected to the computer's internal floppy port. And it's a standard. AT power supply in these things. And this thing weighs quite a bit. I'm not sure of the exact weight, but it's got to be about 10 kilos. <laughs> it's not exactly a light thing. So I've already removed the screws. So let's take the front off. And just watch out for any pops and bangs uh, as I do this if you're wearing headphones. Uh, it's a little bit tricky to get off. Let me open up the back first. There we go, and it's released. Let me take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, PCBWay, my favorite manufacturer of prototype and low-cost PCBs. The quality of their boards is superb. They also offer CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing, and injection molding. They can even assemble your boards for you. Sign up today as a new member and get a $5 welcome bonus. There is a link to their website in the video description where you can check out the amazing services they have to offer. Now back to the bench. So, here is the actual mechanism. So there's a little controller board here which controls all the motors. The mechanism, the floppy drive and underneath is the power supply. And then yeah, just the floppy cable and the serial cable. So what we can do is we can hook this up to a power supply. And I already have a serial cable ready to go. Uh, 
This is some either protective cover or some kind of counterweight, maybe. So you just load your floppy disks in here. That's right in there. And then we just need to open our serial terminal. turn on the device. Okay, and it comes up LSK Autoloader Copyright LSK Data Systems 1996, so that dates it. Now, luckily I do have the manual, although it is in German, which does give the commands and the error codes, but the basic command is you send the letter I for insert, and it loads the disk. And then once uh, it is finished, it'll eject the disk and it'll either be an accept, which throws the disk out of the front or a reject. And there is a little area there for the rejected disks. So if I press A and enter, it's accepted it. So now I load the next one. And if I press I, uh oh, sorry. Um, it's reject and then that rejects the disk into this little compartment here which is for the rejected disks. I mean it's quite a simple mechanism it's literally just a mechanical. Okay so now we can get a look inside the actual floppy disk drive with the cover off and we'll do an insert. And yeah, this is the main, there's just this main rail here. So this slides along and it loads. And then there's a, another bar here, which then uh, will be used for the eject. So if I do an accept, and yeah, let's see if we can get a better shot of the load mechanism. Yeah. So it's literally just, uh, I mean, it's on just a few motors, servo, solenoids, and some uh, sensors to tell it, you know, there's a disc, there's one here for the eject, to say that it's gone through okay, and some other positional ones. And that's pretty much it. I do have a second unit, which actually has the, the self-contained system, but it's in pieces at the moment because that unit was well, both units were faulty, so I've managed to uh, uh, cobble together one working system. So one of the floppy drives was completely dead. One of the control boards was dead. Um, so I managed to salvage them. Uh, this is the controller board. I have the serial chip is missing because yeah, I needed to pinch it to put onto here. But yeah, it's just, you know, you've got a simple H bridge arrangement there. And uh, this is a, a PIC microcontroller, so a one-time programmable one, so it's pretty old school in a 28-pin dip. And then, yeah, these are just uh, for the various motors and sensors. And then, yeah, the mode here, so you've got different test modes and things like that you can put the machine into. So hopefully I can get the other one up and running at some point, uh, which would be good. So, just turn that off a sec. I'll disconnect it. So then I had the bright idea of, well, what happens if I combine this with a grease weasel? Aha. And I have one here. Uh, this is the newer version with the type C uh, connector on it. And literally we can just plug a different ribbon cable into here and there and then use a Raspberry Pi to control the serial and to obviously store the images. Now obviously loading them in here, yeah you can probably hold what 15 maybe 20 floppies in there and then yeah they're just going to spit out but there are some other pieces for this if I can find them. There it is. Let me get the menu out of the way, it'll be easier to see them. Uh, 
This is the output cassette. There is a short one as well, but this is the long one. So <coughs> I think this thing will probably hold about 50 discs or maybe more. It's spring loaded, so as the, the discs go in, um, it just pushes it down. So obviously the discs don't have too far to fall and don't get damaged. And then for the input side, there is this. Now this slides onto here. Uh, yes, it slides on that way. Or does it slide on sideways? Yeah, no, it slides on that way. So that way you can fill it with many more discs. So you have to get the discs in when that's in the way, but yeah. So you can literally fit, I think at least, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 discs in here. So you could just load it up, click on a button, walk away, and yeah, it's gonna start copying all your discs. So this is going to be my next project. I've already penciled out some ideas on how it's all going together. Obviously this needs to have a good cleanup. It needs to be stripped down. It's quite dirty. I did give it a quick wipe over because it had been stored in a damp basement. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. There is some rust here and yeah, the paint is bubbling up. Um, I think it's probably more apparent looking at the bottom of the case. You can see, I don't know how well that will show up on the camera, but yeah, there is a lot of rippling under this paint. So obviously, yeah, the dampness has got into the metal. So the idea then will be to strip this down and then completely repaint it um, uh, from, I'm not sure what type of paint or what color yet. Whether I try and get something similar, this kind of like is, yeah, a typical kind of metal computer case kind of paint, so kind of a stippled cream colour. Uh, so yeah, it's all gonna have to be sanded down, filled, flatted, and then uh, resprayed. Uh, I have been practicing my paint spraying skills on some other projects, so uh, yeah, I will be uh, doing that. Uh, I'll have to make myself a kind of like a makeshift spray booth on the balcony. Because, yeah, I don't highly have a workshop or anything. Oh, I did leave the disc in. So let me just connect the power. Yeah, I think it will auto eject once it once you turn it on. Yeah, yeah and it goes straight into the reject. So, I mean, the good thing about this is it's also, the uh, floppy drive is easy to remove because yeah, I'm guessing they class that as a more of a consumable part and might need to be replaced depending on how many discs you were copying. So it's on a sled, so yeah, you can literally just unclip it, take it out. And then yeah, these hold in the front of the mechanism, there's some screws underneath, and then just the basic power supply. The main interesting thing is this actual mechanism. So rather than dismantle this one now, I have the device from the other machine. So the actual mechanism is the same. This has this a little black shroud around here. That's um, in case you're not using the hopper to load it. Um, so you can put that on there. So it's just yeah, a low volume unit. As I said, yeah, the circuit board that controls it is faulty. Normally that would screw onto here. And I think one of the sensors was also faulty. But yeah, you can see here, here's the, the main mechanism that drives this arm. So yeah, it's just some, it's a standard motor with this big gearbox on it, probably just to reduce it down. Yeah. And yeah, this arm is just, yeah, just a simple slide mechanism. I mean, this was probably very low volume. I mean, the main body is just, is just um, stamped metal. And then, yeah, 
I mean, if you look at this, this is use the bangs there. And this is just literally just a piece of raw stock that's been drilled. I mean, they didn't even finish it. I mean, yeah, it's crude. And there's a little rubber thing that you would find like on a kitchen cabinet just there as a dampener to stop it slamming against that. Well, yeah, so construction is quite simple, but elegant. Uh, there's more sen another sensor here. I think there is. Yeah, there's also yeah a sensor here. So the idea then is once this is all complete and finished, um, I'm a member of a of a, a maker space in the centre of Berlin called Berlin Creators, and yeah. So once I've finished, I will donate the completed machine to the club so that uh, you know people can come in with their old three and a half inch floppy disks and um, they can copy them. But what about five and a quarter inch? Well, the interesting thing there is we still have this 37 way port on the back. So, the grease weasel can support up to four drives. So when we have the internal drive, we replace this ribbon cable so that it can go to the floppy drive and then go to this port. The idea then is to use a external five and a quarter inch drive, which will just connect into here. Um, so that, uh, yeah, you can at least use a uh, five and a quarter or copy five and a quarter inch dry uh, discs um albeit yeah you'll have to sit there and do it manually i don't know if there's any kind of a similar type of mechanism that exists for five and a quarter inch discs um there may well be but obviously they're a lot more delicate so i don't know how well they would have worked with a, uh, a mechanical machine because obviously these are rigid so it's easy just to have them inserted and ejected so we will uh, have to see. So I will end the video here. Um, next time you see this, it should hopefully have been uh, completely stripped and sanded back and painted. I won't record that because yeah, I think there are plenty of videos on YouTube of people uh, cleaning things up, sanding them down, repainting them. And I'm definitely not a professional at uh, spray painting, so yeah, I don't think that will be a good exercise. And then, yeah, we'll have to sit down and um, write the code to tie everything together. So, as always, thank you for watching. If you like the video, then give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me an Australian thumbs up. Um, hit that. Uh, subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of uh, future videos and yeah thank you for watching